Pickaxe. Hello and welcome to Yompa! <laughs> This is Yomp, it's Ye Old Movie Podcast. It's an acronym, Y O M P. Do you get it now? It's very clever. This is a movie discussion podcast where we randomly pick movies from curated lists. I am Simon the Diggy Hole Man Honeydew Lane, famous for uh, being uh, Mr. Yogg's cast, and I am joined by the the ever uh, stinky fragrant G Star Games. Hello, G. What the hell, man? Really? Starting off the year calling me stinky? What is G-stank. this? You stank. No, I don't stank. You're just a stinky man, okay? Stinky, smelly man. Yes, welcome. Welcome to the first podcast. If I was going to draw you, I would do stink lines coming off of you. And little I'd flies. I'd kick you off of a cliff, all right? After you did that. Uh, welcome to the first episode of the year. This is the year 2024. My name is G, uh, Christian name G Star Games. I'm also known for harassing and being friends with these two in the Yogg's cast. And joined by me is Boof Rogerson, who's not stinky. I, I, that's true, I've had a wash today, I not you did. You started off this episode, the, the recording, by saying, <laughs> "What did you say, Boo? Tell the tell the audience." I've been. Have I been hosed down? Is that what I was saying? <laughs> she, she got one of those rubber hoses from Extro. Yeah, I had to get one of the rubber hoses from Extro to wash to wash my ass and my shoulder, and then you know you might as well just wash the rest of you at that stage. So I'm I'm having yeah. three showers a day. Oh my goodness! Damn. Three. She's never um, been cleaner. I've never been cleaner, and my bathroom, like, is what it, it's. I'm gonna have to start changing my towel more frequently because it doesn't get dry. <laughs> there's there's two important facts here. One, uh, Sophie's had two tattoos recently mm. on her shoulder and ass, and two, her bathroom is being refurbished, <laughs> and she's using why, a hose. Why did you get the one on your ass? Did you just felt like it? Yeah, I mean, okay. like Fair I, enough. I wanted one. I wanted, I wanted one. Right, I wanted a bat on my like lower back and a moth on my mm. shoulder. And I initially wanted them very, quite small, and then it turned out that the place that I go to doesn't really do small. So it took. You needed a big, big area. I needed a big to... area. <laughs> The smaller it is, it loses detail. Basically, it loses a lot of detail. And these guys, they do, they do detail. Um, and they, they're, they're multi international award winning artists there. And I'm like, I'm not going to argue with these fellas. They know what they're fucking doing, you know. Mm. And it took. I mean, I think it was six, at least six hours of of actual needle time. Oh my god. Um, and <laughs> I'm going to tell the story here because it's so good. Anyway, so um, I, he put the placement on. I was like, actually, that's pretty nice there instead of like on the lower back. Um, the, you know, it's he's peeping. And I was thinking, oh, I can always get another bat to go on the back. So I can, I can have a flock of bats. Mm-hmm. So design them, put the stencil of the moth on. The man does, hardly speaks a lick of English. He's an Italian man and he looks a bit like Daff. Oh, he looks a bit like he looks a bit like Daff. He's got a, he's got the mustache. So you were saying he looks a bit Daff. He does look a bit Daff. Daft, as in like he looks like an idiot. <laughs> I'm like, damn, so Daff. <laughs> Daff does have um. He's got a uh, Greek blood in him, so he's mm. got that Mediterranean look. He does have Greek blood in him. Greek boy, and uh, this this man is he's lovely. Uh, but you know, he just he kind of he he goes to work. He just he's there. He it's like he has. A fucking office job, basically. Mm. Uh, he, they all ordered coffee for themselves, and then he disappears into the bathroom for, a few, for quite a while. Obviously, taking his morning shit. Taking morning shit, and um, I'm 
so there's like three or four beds like in the the main parlor area and the whole thing is glass um oh no and everyone can see your bare ass ryan the man who runs it he's like this is like the one the one studio where we don't have frosted glass up um uh, so I'll get you a screen. And I was supposed to be next to the fucking door. Like, oh, my Lord. My station was by the door on a day that was like two degrees outside. Um, uh, and the whole place is like really open. And, and he was like, you know what? We're going to put you in the back room, which is, I guess, where they do piercings. It's a tiny little <laughs> room. Back rooms. The back Who's rooms. The back rooms? <laughs> and it's got the printers. She no-clipped. I no-clipped through <laughs> Into the back rooms with the printers um, and the piercing <laughs> chair. And there's a big mirror, but there's still a bay window, floor to ceiling, bay window. Oh. That is basically open. They've got all the decals on the outside of the window, you know, like the, the names of the shop and stuff. But it's pretty, it's, yeah, it's, it's not as exposed. But I expected this and I put little, I put nipple covers on before I, went to the place because I was like, I've, I've got to take my clothes off and I can't wear bras. And I was going to wear my... Wait, why? It was on your shoulder. Why are you getting naked for your sh for the shoulder tattoo? In for a penny, in for a pound. <laughs> He's a very <laughs> handsome fuck? man, G-Star Game. <laughs> no, okay. like, so it's, it's, it's a big, it's a big t tattoo on my shoulder and the, basically you, you don't want anything in the way. No straps. No straps, like, no sleeves. Around no... the back or over the shoulder, nothing. If I'd have had a t-shirt and I took it off one arm, there'd still be quite a bit of like material hanging around and it wouldn't be as comfortable for it. Like he'd have to like tape it out of the way or something. Because I'm sitting in a chair, but he, he sat me in a hard plastic chair, straddling it from like with my arms over the back of the seat, right? Yeah, and I'm thinking, well, this is fairly uncomfortable to sit, but apparently he works fast, yeah. so I'll go with it. And it was fine. It started off, you know, pretty fine. And I was trying to use Plex to watch a film, and Plex app doesn't work, so I had to watch something on Freebie. And I watched a fucking vampire film, and I'm getting a bat tattooed, and I've got bat earrings, and I've got a <laughs> bat navel ring, like the, the. I I must have come across as quite obsessed at that time. And, yeah. and they're getting tattooed and I hear a clunk on the window. <laughs> Sorry, just FYI, you need a Plex Pass if you're using it on like oh. a phone or a tablet. What? Um, yep, 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 yep. You heard a thunk on the window. Don't tell me it was a fucking bat that flew into the window. I wish it was. That would have been great. Unfortunately, oh. it was nothing that exciting. It was a fucking window cleaner. Oh! <laughs> <gasps> Oh no! The window cleaners were were there. I was um, I was I had my my whole back out, my top off. I I did have a shirt. Was it George for me? <laughs> <laughs> when I'm cleaning windows, he, he, that's why he wrote that song about peeping into yeah. girls getting tattoos in the back rooms. Um, and I was so like the adrenaline, you get like spikes of adrenaline and then it dumps and you get really cold yeah and i'm sitting there with my shirt off and i've got i've got my my shirt on back to front so that my my top half's covered but the way that they put the screen right because there was a printer in the way and they still needed to use the printer so there was a fucking two foot gap with the table with the printer on it <laughs> by people just walking past because it was next to the bathroom and the kitchen and they stuff. They peer over the brother printer. They and did. It's, and it's Holy shit. They did. Because there was this guy. That, I mean, at least Ryan was like, oh, he was covering his eyes saying, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. I, need, I, need. I was like, it's fine. But there was one guy, don't know his name, but he was like, all right, mate. And then just had a conversation with the guy that was tattooing me. And I was like, um, all right, okay. Never mind. Don't worry about it. I hate it. when they do that. I hate when they do that. It's like... Especially if if it's like a normal uh, placement, it's fine, right? Yeah. But like, usually they they should ask like, "Oh, is it all right if I, you know, I like, peer in, stand here, or if I peer and in?" And you're paying for the guy's time. I am, but and but the thing is, he he was still, but the, he can't speak English. 
So he was just going, yeah, yeah, yes. <laughs> Good. <laughs> yes, Maserati, yeah. Lamborghini. He called everyone bro. Mitsubishi. Wait. Hey, pasta. He, oh. he, who was that? Fine. And <laughs> so anyway, it gave me. It's the window cleaner. It's the window oh cleaner in the back. He came into our Discord it's room. On Discord. The Discord rooms have windows. They do they do. have recording windows? Well, we do we're have using we're windows. We're using windows. Oh and we, my god! You can use a program to clean your Windows installation. That's and crazy. That is crazy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. We haven't Ladies. even spoken about the film yet. But anyway, we're going to start talking about the film. No, I'm wait, afraid. No, well, she hasn't I mean, gotten to the punchline yet. She hasn't gotten. There was, There's a punchline. <laughs> no, there wasn't. Well, I, I mean, so. it was my ass. <laughs> The fact that I had to get my entire arse out. I was like, can I please lie down at this stage? I was struggling. You know, I'd been sitting up for ages. So I wrapped the, the, the tiny little piercing bed and at least it had a pull out thing for your feet to lay on. And he was, I was kicking well, like, about three hours into the arse tattoo, which was about six hours into tattooing. And I was kicking and I was wincing and I was watching Family Guy on my fucking phone. Because oh, family, family Guy. I needed something. Hey, I needed wow. something that was that was like inane and, and brain dead to sort of just get lost yeah. in, you know, at that stage. Yeah. And I was like, I said to the guy, do you want any, any music on? And, it, and he was like, you're sure anything like he d- he didn't understand me i was like do you want do you want to do anything he just fucking worked in silence he just well anyway um the moral of the story is i have two very large but very detailed and pretty tattoos that will heal into lovely things on my back but it was a struggle and everyone everyone saw my tits and my ass <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> Oh, the the joys of getting tattoos. The joys. Can't wait to get mine. Um, just a, a giant xenomorph. Yes. Um, riding a unicycle. Put it in your ass crack. Before Put it the... in my ass crack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that when you spread your cheeks, it's like a little <laughs> mouth. Yeah. It's crawling out of my ass. <laughs> yeah. He's in the vents. He's in the vents. Yes. That's 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 right. We uh we rolled the dice before all the Christmas uh specials. No, it was at the end of the fourth Christmas special. Yep. Was it? It was. Yep. Wow, I don't Bryony, remember. Bryony Bryony was there to witness it. Wow, I head empty. Not a single thought behind these eyes. No. But yes, nothing it's, going it on. Was one of mine Sh- shock horror. Um and it was Alien. Why did you choose that's Alien? Thanks, G? thanks for listening. Thanks for listening. Uh, Why it's, you for listening. <laughs> uh it's it's you know, it's a cult classic. Everyone loves Alien. It's a good film. I like it. <laughs> That's pretty the much answer. brilliant. I That's like it. it. Great. <laughs> it's a good film. Uh yeah. Uh I don't know. I can't I'm kind of interested because I know I think Simon likes it from what I have gathered. Um but yeah. you're always the mystery in this in any equation booth, so Mm. The wild gonna, card. She's always the wild card. So she's either gonna fucking love this film, or she's gonna absolutely hate it. But I think Tear she's. It to I think. Yeah, I think you're more on the like side for this one. I think you like this one. Okay. But I guess we'll find out. I guess you will. We're not gonna go through scene by scene. We're just gonna be the the loose format that we've um we've enjoyed doing over the holiday period. I never um, realized this film was like Dracula. I never realized it was like 2 hours long this film. I think I watched a director's cut, but I'm not sure. Did Ripley have a dream sequence? No, so I didn't watch it. Or was that in Aliens? Uh, that was in Aliens, I think. <laughs> okay. Shit. No, that didn't It happen. starts off where she's dreaming. Oh. And she wakes up and she's like, "Oh fucking hell!" and the cat's there, which is great. I don't think I'm don't think I'm that familiar with the director's cut of uh, Alien, but I did. I do think that some of the gore was cut out from the Disney Plus version that I watched. Boo! Not much, but I think a little bit was. But it's hard to tell because there's a lot of there's a lot of implied violence. Huh? And not. Yeah. 
You don't get to see, like, um, when Lambert dies, for example. You don't really get to see what happens. And Dallas, of course, he just gets jump scared. I love that. I thought that was brilliant. It's great. It's just, or the it's guy just that the was tall... in the vents. Yeah, that was such the a tall yeah. guy in a rubber suit jumping out. That, no, but that's such like a, a good reveal because, because Lambert is so fucking useless. She's like, um, you need to move, you need to move, you need to move. And then she's like, not that way. And then he gets you. it. Which direction, <laughs> you dumb I've lost it. Bitch. I can't see it. It's right by you. I, I can forgive Ash for all the bullshit because he was just following orders as a robot. Sorry, spoilers. Wow. There's going to be a lot of spoilers. Hashtag um, Ash did nothing wrong. Oh my <laughs> no, God. Here's the thing, right? Wow. He doesn't have free will as a robot because if he's going to have like this thing saying, your new mission is to bring this yeah. alien life form home, and he, he won't be able to do anything about that, I, I guess. So Yeah, the working Joes, which is, I mean, I don't, I don't know if he's, because he's the, the, the fucking androids, right, in that universe, but I don't yeah. think any of them have like you know free will so i think yeah he's just he just has to obey basically yeah and that's what it doesn't mean that he just has to kill someone um who did he kill well he he attempted to kill ripley but i think it was more that she threw him against a wall well didn't you see that made him malfunction yeah he was bleeding from his head yeah he was coming yeah (laughs) (laughs) and and uh, yeah, so I mean, but Lambert, she had no fucking excuse. I mean, she was a woman. She's just yeah. a hysterical woman. A hysterical which woman, which contrasts well with Ripley. God, that when she when she when Ripley came down the ladder and she and that woman saw her walking down and she fucking like slapped her so hard. That looks real. Like that. That that if. It's a hundred percent real. A hundred percent a real slap. Like I felt that. My ancestors felt that. Slapped her. Who? What was this? The slap. So, so you know when they were they went onto the alien ship, and they they said, mm. oh, you know that guy. He's been, you know, he's injured. We there's something on his face. We have to get it off. And hey, Ripley's, yeah, yeah. And Ripley's like, no. If he's if there's something wrong with him, he has to be quarantined. This isn't procedure. Blah blah blah. And everyone was like, Ripley, shut the fuck up, let us in. You know, we're, we're in trouble here. And Ripley was like, pretty much like, not going to let them in. But then the scientist was like, no, fuck it. You guys are, you know, I'm letting you in. And then Ripley goes, c- climbs down the ladder as they're inspecting the med bay and what's going on in the med bay. And the lady just slaps her as she comes down. Lambert slaps Ripley. What the fuck? I this, missed, was the I porn, missed that. The, this was the porn version that she watched. Maybe this was in the director's cut. It, I think or it was because I did Disney not Plus. see any slaps. Maybe it was like no girl on girl violence on Disney Plus. Yeah. Maybe, but yeah, no, she she was like, she's like, you bitch, you were going to leave us out there. And she fucking like sl- slapped her hard. And then they all, almost had a cat fight and the men had to break them up. Damn. Yeah. Jesus. Pretty good. <laughs> Pretty good. Oh my god. Like I was saying, I can forgive Ash for that because he had no free will, but Lambert had free will and she was just being a fucking useless bitch. I mean, to be fair, I would be a fucking useless bitch in this situation. You put me you I if I'm if I'm on a mining spaceship, okay? Mm-hmm. And I do mining. And you say okay. to me you, there's this thing that's trying to kill everybody and it bleeds acid and also mm-hmm. um, it's running around in the vents. We can't see it. We don't know what's going on. We don't know anything about it. Uh, but you need to direct this person around the vents so he doesn't die. Mm. And I'm also having my time of the month and also... Um, My boyfriend just broke up with me and I broke a nail. And I couldn't get tickets to Taylor Swift. (laughs) I couldn't get tickets to Taylor Swift. Like, I'm going to fucking melt down in that situation. Starbucks got my coffee order wrong. Yeah. Oh, my God. The guy, the delivery guy could not get to the ship. And it was, I could Mm. just see him on the app driving around. Jonesy, 
Jonesy the cat was sick on my bed. Jonesy... You know, everything went wrong. And Jonesy started eating one of my spider plants. And, like, you can't get a replacement spider plant in space. No. It's famously, that's the tagline of the movie. <laughs> in space, no one could get a replacement spider plant. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, <laughs> what the fuck? Uh, anyway, yeah. I just, it was, it was that sort of annoyance. But the scare, it's the, the, the reveal was great, you know. She was stupid, but cool. A little she scary was not man. the best person for that job. No. So um, I, I literally just looked this up and it said, I found this article that said, an original crew member is canonically trans. I don't, I, anyway. And I scrolled down and it says, Lambert was one of the last crew members to be killed by the xenomorph. According to her file, Lambert suffers from nervousness and hyperactivity. No shit. Yeah. Her file <laughs> also recommends that she serve on smaller vessels with a smaller crew, uh, but despite the nervousness, she's good at her job. Well, but she's more reluctant to take risks. She was not good at her job. Well, no, she was. Maybe she was good at her job because she, the was nervousness a, she was on just... a mining ship. Yeah. You know, her job isn't to track uh, an alien. Their job isn't even mining. Their job is to just be on a ship and yeah. attach the ship to like a big load and then pull the load back to earth is or it wherever yeah, no, surely they have to do something know. to get it to get the resources. someone else is doing the mining they're just going back and forth carrying the resources what a fucking great job like that'd be fine by it's a me tugboat that thing is a monster the nostromo though that thing is huge dude huge the big old bit of rock it's carrying is even bigger yeah. I did like what did you think of what's his face? It began with a P, his name. Parker. 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 He just wanted Yafit to get paid. Koto from um Live and Let Die. He just wants his his stocks. He just wants his shares, his stocks. His yeah. stocks. Yeah, him and Brett. They just want their money. And damn right. And he was he was he was held together the whole, the like pretty much the whole way. Yeah, I like the, the line, I want to go home and party. And I was like, oh, but the contract says that you've got to or you don't get paid. If you don't answer this, this, this signal, if you don't investigate these things, you don't get paid. That's fucking bullshit. <laughs> yeah, so if they get like a, a directive from Mother, that yeah. comes from Mother, I guess. And, yeah, because even I was like, "Why? Why bother? Why bother?" They, they thought know? of that, didn't they? They they thought of everything in the script. They did. They it's did. This, it's this company that just they. It's either responding to SOS signals or just discovering something weird and new that they can profit off of. Well, Ripley was saying that it wasn't initially. They thought it was an SOS signal, but actually, it's a warning. Mm. It was a warning yeah. signal or something, and I was like, interesting. They learn that just a bit too late. A little bit. But she seemed very calm about it. Ash made a very good point. Like She was like, oh, I'm going to go out and get her. And he was like, well, I mean, if it was a warning, they'll find out that it was a warning by the time that you get there. <laughs> yeah. Oh was, my I was God. like, mm, he's got a point. So, I mean, this whole time you're thinking that Ash is a, an Ash hole. It's just an Ash hole at this stage. He was acting very sus, obviously. Like, Yeah. Uh, but he, he he sort of did it in a way that wasn't like too weird. You could tell that he was still kind of concerned for the safety of people and the operation, but you know, he's a scientist, so he was still very keen on investigating whatever the hell had you know latched onto um Kane's face. Yeah. His name? yeah I Kane. think he's I think he's quite clinical and he doesn't have great people skills. And I mean, there's the, there's, you know, Parker like talks over him and yeah. he tells him to get out of his chair, <laughs> that kind of thing. <laughs> People don't mm. respect him very mm. much mm. because he comes across as a little bit of a cold prick. Yeah. But then he is, turns out he is an android. So that might explain his behavior a little bit. Might explain it a little bit. God, when, um, when they'd sort of like gone on to the big, you know, all the reveals around the structure of the alien ship and you know the way that they were navigating through it and he sort of when Kane like sort of slipped and I'm like oh my god dude and he just clumsy idiot <laughs> yeah and he just kept getting closer and closer to the eggs and I'm like 
Really? You okay? Yeah. Looks like there's sure. something living inside. Oh, it looks like the egg's opening. Oh yeah. fuck! And it's like, come on, mate, come on. <laughs> yeah. What are like, you doing? Not enough precaution from these people whatsoever. Do they, they not just... have like procedures they need to follow when they discover alien life? They probably do. Well, yeah. Well, this is what I was thinking because obviously they're you know it's very it's 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 in the future and technology is very advanced and I'm thinking. What kind of alien life have they, as the human race, what kind of alien life have they come across? Because mm. I'm, I'm, I don't know the the sort of in depth law of the alien universe, right? Um, <laughs> amateur. But from what I under, amateur. But from what I understand, it's just there's like loads of humans, and obviously you've got the androids as well. But I don't think there's like aliens that live amongst them. No, no. no. Yeah. So. But yeah, all the all the stuff was you know when they were looking at the eggs and the face hugger and all of that stuff like on the actual sh- the alien ship was just grim, so disgusting, but so well done, very well done. I loved the design and that massive alien life form that had been fossilized in his chair, as they they put oh, it yeah. with his <laughs> chest burst. The space open. jockey, space jockey. And they're like, oh, it looks like his. His chest exploded from the inside out. Oh, that's strange. Never mind. Uh, Kane's discovered a hole. Moving on. <laughs> Moving sure, on. it's not an important thing. Oh, my God. Yeah. But I love the design. Beautiful. Beautiful. What's the name? Krieger? What's the H. name H. of the guy? H.R. Giger. Or Giger, Giger sorry, either way. The, the Swiss artist. And, I mean, this is, this is a bit of trivia, but... Um, the screenwriter, Dan O'Bannon, mm. introduced Ridley Scott to the artwork of H.R. Geiger, and they looked at a certain painting of his called Necronom 4. And okay. if you've not seen this before, it's worth, it's worth Googling Necronom 4, because it is the xenomorph. <laughs> oh, it, it is, literally is. It literally is the xenomorph. And as uh, soon as Ridley Scott saw that, he was like, okay, yes. That's the alien. Um, yeah. So they hired H.R. Geiger and um, the rest, as they say, is history. I think I have a book on the art of Geiger and all this stuff. And I'm pretty like, sure you do. There's lots of weird sex I'm stuff pretty sure about. I do. I've, I've, I remember, I've got so much stuff, but it's with my, my records, so because it's a big book, so I can't remember what exactly it is in that book. There's, there's a lot of sex stuff. Sex looking stuff in there, I think. Mm. Yeah. A lot of messed up looking penises. Um, yeah. That's what I love. Sometimes made made of metal. Yeah. Monk ass. But it's weird because the, like, I think that, like, the, like, the inside of the ship and everything, it looks like it's the in- inside of a giant dead creature. Yes, it does. Everything. It's so strange. And it's so um, distinctive. Yeah. There's a lot of, like, yeah, the 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 structure inside looks very weird and very very anatomical. I don't it's know what other way organic. to just. It looks kind yeah, of organic or- and bony and yeah. Yeah, it looks like a huge monolithic organism of some sort. Um, but there's a lot of weird sort of sexual organs like like littered around. Like there's one that <laughs> just looked like huge vulvas, right? And I'm like, okay. That's fine, um, but on a, <laughs> there's just a lot of more other disgusting things going on with like the face. Like every time I see the face hugger in the egg, I, it just makes me want to puke. It's ugh. oh god, so, it's so gross looking. I hate it. Face hate hugger it so is much. the worst because it's just it just look, it's like a weird spider that attaches itself to your face. Just I Not hate only, that. Well, you well, hate spiders. It spider. puts it down his throat. Yeah, right? it's... it puts a big willy thing down your throat um, and puts eggs, puts, puts puts an egg in your belly. The worst fucking parent ever. Just fucking, as soon as he has the baby, you know, as soon as you have the baby, just fuck, it fucks off. You know, it doesn't it, pay for that baby. I guess it puts like an embryo in, in your belly and then that becomes like the little baby cute alien. It's not even in the belly, it's like in the chest, right? Yeah. It comes out of his chest, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I'm not quite sure where exactly that tube goes. 
it's in the throat, but I yeah. I think when when it when it ripped out of that guy's maybe it was in his lung somewhere. Yeah, 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 yeah. God, the way it came out of his chest was so funny. It's such an ugly little <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> It's cute, and I love the little noise it makes when it comes out. Ah! It does its weird, like, screech thing and then runs off. Oh, my, it reminds me of that movie. It was a Galaxina where there was a little oh. creature and it just sort of scurried across the room. Oh, God. Yeah, it was Galaxina. Because that, you, that's what you really liked about the film, that little creature mm, yeah. that came out of the egg. The egg, yeah, the egg. The egg, and, yeah, and the And then egg. it just... And it was nowhere to be found for ages, and then it came back at some point. Yeah. Big. Yeah, big yeah, yeah, yeah. Big boy. Big boy. Much like the Xenomorph in Alien. It's so funny that they're looking for this tiny little thing, and it, it's grown up quick, real quick. It, cro- co- it does grow up fast, doesn't it? They, it does. The scene where Brett is looking for Jonesy, and because they, they think they found the little alien, but it was Jonesy hiding in a locker and he jump scares What was Jonesy doing in a fucking was... locker? You bastard. I don't know how How'd he you got get in, in there. there? <laughs> how long he's been in there? Was he in there for like 10 months? He's the smartest crew member, like hands down. Well, he survives. He's one of the two characters to survive. I love him so much. Same. Like, and I would also risk my own life to save that little man. Or any cat. Yeah. yeah. I'm not leaving him on there. No. My my favourite Jonesy scene is when the alien is like a- attacking and devouring Brett. Yeah. And the cat is just watching. Yeah. Yes. Just like slowly <laughs> that, blinking ooh. without like a care in the world. Yeah. Just watching this guy get fucking murdered. He's not even like, you know, he's not even scared. Because usually no. like when, when there's like that much kerfuffle and chaos, right? A cat just sort of goes, what the, f- what the fuck is going on? They sort of get a bit worried and, uh, but he's just, just chilling. He's just vibing. Chilling. This and guy's also- getting mauled. Like when Jonesy's in the in the carrier and the xenomorph's just looking at it and he's like, Well, got a new friend, I guess. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> like there's just no he's just very chill. He doesn't he doesn't mind. He is. And Ripley's like fucking throwing him around as well a little I bit know. in the carrier. <laughs> <laughs> he must be quite bruised in that carrier. Oh, I mean oh, she's man. doing it for his own good, you know. It's uh, I'm sure he'll survive a couple of banging around considering the ship is about to self-destruct right you yeah. know yeah she's she's panic i was panicking like they they portrayed that so well you know her initiating the the self-destruct then she goes back she's like no i don't want to it's you such know. a complicated thing that takes a while to do to initiate the self-destruct it's not just a button you press you have to do this whole fucking sequence of things yeah, and yeah, she yeah. gets there to try and cancel it because there's a 10 minute count there and you've got five minutes to cancel it and she's there and the clock's running down to being five minutes and she manages to cancel it but it's just a few seconds too late yeah. just a few seconds too late and she she calls mother a bitch she does <laughs> a bitch. like i mean the thing is if you're gonna have a self-destruct thing maybe make it a little bit easier to cancel like when you are cancelling it, like a couple yeah. of buttons for for such occasions because for such occasions of self destructing, <laughs> yeah, yes, well, it I would mean, be nice. To... Th- it's going to deter people from fucking around with it. Like if somebody wants to sabotage a ship and they go and try and do the self destruct sequence, and it's got these alerts and stuff, so that someone else can go and hang on a minute, you piece of shit we don't want this but yeah yeah because it's a commercial you know multi gajillion d- dollar or whatever you know enterprise right so you'd um, think they try to make it a, a little easier to to cancel it but what if what if parker just you know parker and brett yeah brett's got the gun parker sets off the self-destruct sequence and he's like we want our shares you've got five minutes true we won't cancel the, the thing. We'll all die unless you give us our full shares. I like how you're making these guys the bad guys. They're they're such good boys. They're they're eccentric, <laughs> but they're good boys. 
So I feel so bad for them. Like they land on, you know, they they have this calculated landing on the alien life form, life the rock or whatever the fuck the planet, the planetoid. It's it's a moon and it's called LV426. Is it? Cuz she called it Later a... it was named uh Ek- Oh. Um, by colonists that came by later, oh. which is the name of the river of Whoa, that led to the underworld in Greek mythology. Why would you call it, like, your new home the, after the river of woe? <laughs> I mean, the planet is a shithole. I mean, it's, it's ominous. Well, it's just before it got terraformed and everything. Wait, before it got terraformed? Yeah, So yeah, when yeah. did it get terraformed? Was it terraformed when they like, landed on it? Like a hundred years later or something. Okay. Yeah, because when they land on it, it looks like shit, right? Like I would. Yeah, it's awful. It's yeah. freezing cold. There's winds. Everything's just rock, barren yeah. rock. It's like black. I want to know what happened. <laughs> like black <pool. laughs> It's like any beach in the UK. Yeah. Full of shit. I want to know what happened when they landed because they were also very precise and very you know on it and calculated and it looked like they were. Sort of about to land on flat earth, flat land, and then it just went to shit. I love, I love that. Because, like, this is... It shows that it's actually a whole... There's a whole process, a whole routine you need to go through for taking yeah, off yeah, and landing. Yeah. It's not easy. It's not... You don't just press a button and you land the ship. Yeah. It's very complicated, especially when you're landing on uneven terrain as well. Yeah. And that's what went wrong. With winds blowing, gale force winds blowing and all this shit. Yeah. And you can't see anything. So they were like landing like blind on this this wind swept uh, wind swept rocky terrain. It was dangerous. It was a dangerous thing to do. So I like that there was like a 5 minute process of them trying to land this fucking ship. Yeah, the, the from the beginning till uh, you know where it was quiet, everyone's in cryo sleep or whatever the fuck they're frozen and then you know, it's very dead on the ship, and then they wake up, and it's a very slow start, but it's all not not in a bad way. It doesn't drag. I kind of like it, you know, the way that oh, yeah. it, it all it starts out with the music and the iconic sort of alien mm. tune and everything, and yeah, it just sort of ramps up from there. And I, I really, I thought the pacing of the whole movie was very good. Very, very well paced. 100% agree. Just the, the slow escalation of things, how things start off. It looks quite clean and, and clinical and, and nice. And mm. it's almost reminiscent of 2001 A Space Odyssey. Mm-hmm. But then as soon as they get out of the pods and they're like sitting around and they're complaining about the food and they're they all smoking. feel like shit and everyone's they're, smoking. Everyone yeah. is smoking. <laughs> everyone's fucking smoking. Suddenly you're like, oh, this isn't like 2001. It's, it's a lot more grounded. These are like real people and... Yeah, you know, in a shitty situation. I don't think smoking on a on a spaceship's a good idea. I think everything. I think that's why everything started going wrong. Like, yeah, you know, I when mean, they, they landed, smoking and the, kills. everything broke. Everything broke, yeah. and I think it was a, just a buildup of tar on the inside of the whole ship, or maybe a, like <laughs> um, an unauthorized wind chime hanging in the. <laughs> oh, <laughs> there was a lot of like things hanging around, wasn't there? Like, did you like? There was the, literally um, a wind chime. Did you like all the um, the pictures of naked ladies in one yes! of the... Yes! <laughs> oh my god. That's Fabulous. where uh, Ash was like beating up Ripley and then you just see like a whole collage of titties. Hell I'm yeah. like, okay, okay. <laughs> it's an interesting section, but sure. In a 70s spaceship movie, there's always pin-up girls... Of course. Also, I don't think it was an accident either that they're in that scene where a man is being violent towards a woman that there were these sexual photos of women in the background. I think that was a deliberate thing. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's kind of weird. Yeah, I, I agree. It seems a little like, did this sort of happen or was this... Can we Can we talk about the scene where, at the end on the shuttle, where Ellen Ripley's in her pants? I hate that. I hate that because, like, it. well, that underwear is doing nothing for her. Like, they're the tiny. She's all. got them on backwards. I think, like, <laughs> that's a tiny. Look. Yeah. Uh, mm. That's everyone used to wear pants like that in the seventies. True. Guess. Yeah, just very loose and very just unflattering. Because you know, it, when you look at fashion over the years, 
uh, I mean, it, it goes from like loose to fitting, loose to fitting. Mm. And the 70s or the late 70s around that time just was very, again, loose. Are we in the fitting stage now? No, I think we're in a, we're in the, we're in the baggy stage again. Everyone's right. wearing Granny white to, everyone's wearing, well, wait, are you talking about underwear or clothes? Talking about pants. So if we're talking about underwear, it's tight. If we're talking about clothes, everyone's going baggy again. Okay, right. noted. Everyone's wearing Y2K. Bullshit. Right. Fashion tips for G-Star Games. Cool. Ugh, I hate it. I I like the scene. I like the scene where she's wearing her tiny pants because yeah, I've watched would. this film many, 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 many times, right? And I know that there's an alien hiding in the shuttle and I know pretty much <laughs> where it is, right? Yeah. But when she walks over and the camera like pans over, yeah, she bends over just as the alien is there in shot. But you yeah. can't tell that it's an alien. But I know it's there. But I'm distracted by by Sigourney Weaver's ass. You see hit the crack of her ass as she bends over, and I'm like, "There's an but there's there's an alien somewhere, but there's but there's Sigourney Weaver's ass." I didn't I even can't notice. Focus on both. Yeah, yeah, I didn't notice at first because the head literally looks like the tubes. Yeah, it's great, isn't it? yeah, it's, it's insane. It's fucking amazing, and I'm just like, but yeah, I was also looking at her ass because I'm like, that. How can you not? L- yeah, she's got a crack out. She does have a crack out. I I think it's great because I mean, there's there's not just a distraction of that, like a magic trick. But also yeah. the fact that she is so vulnerable in that moment. She she's is, yeah. Almost fucking naked. She doesn't got any weapons. And she's in this very, very small area with this thing that if it's anywhere close to you, you are just going to die. And somehow she survives. I love that he like reaches his hand out. <laughs> she's she's like just standing there, then it like Reaches his hand out and it's all creepy and shit. He was sleeping. There was like a uh, like a making of book or something that said that the alien's life cycle was so quick that the alien was actually dying at that what? point. What? Um, what? So That's... it didn't have long, didn't have long left. It, apparently, it was growing paler uh, as the film goes by. Well, you could tell that. Which is hard to tell. He wasn't. Mm. He wasn't his best because he was flopping around on the floor and shit. He was, he was not the strong, independent alien that we once knew. <laughs> strong, yeah. independent woman <laughs> who needs no queen scene no more. He was tired. So the idea is it hid. It hid in the shuttle to basically just die in peace. What are the chances, though, that whole fucking monstrosity of a ship, or the Nostromo, and it ends up on the fucking escape ship, you know? Come well, on! Because the fuck, there's fucking like miniature explosions happening all across the ship as it's self-destructing. It's like yeah. the the coolant has been turned off. Mm. Um, so it's hiding in a safe place. I th- I mean, I did think that it it sort of knew where she was going in a way, as well. So it might have been its last last ditch attempt of survival. Uh, yeah, it could be, it could be, because there was a lot of like, yeah, like you said, mini. Sort of explosions going off, and there's fire everywhere, and like gas spitting from pipes and tubes, and yeah. But I, I didn't. I when you say that it looks like it's dying, or that it's like sort of nearing the end of its cycle, I wonder how much longer it would have survived for if it was yeah. just sort of left there. I don't know. It's weird. I think the the original idea was that this alien lives for like 24 hours or something like it's not around long that's actually fascinating because ash and the whole point of this is saying you know he was like so fascinated by how like great this organism is yeah and how pure it is and how yeah perfect organism and shit yeah so not really (laughs) is it (laughs) <laughs> if it's if its lifespan is like 24 hours uh, they, they still wanted to bring that. it bring it home in any capacity i guess first of all did you see just how many fucking eggs there were there were a lot <laughs> like uh, i don't think it matters too much if it's life cycle short if it you know if it reproduces and has such huge litters 
of um <laughs> does it reproduce because something has to fucking lay him the queen yeah which you know we we see in the next film obviously yeah uh but what happened to her where where is she at she's still on that moon somewhere true <laughs> i don't remember much of the second i know it's a lot more action-packed um, I do remember like bits of it. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. It's very funny, and it's almost like a perfect sequel because they didn't try and do the same thing. They just went in a t- completely different direction, and, and then the third they one just was had a, garbage. They had a whole bunch of of manly, manly men, and even like the the female soldier is very masculine. Yeah, yeah. And they come in with their big guns. Very subtle film. <laughs> and they all get killed. They fail horribly. And it's up to a woman who finds a little girl to save the day. Yeah. Um, and she has to defeat the big uh, female alien. So, yeah. Not the, where the iconic line is. The bitch line. Get away from her, you bitch! Get away from her, you She's bitch! She's always calling things a bitch, isn't she? She is. Yeah, which, again, is a, a, a gendered pejorative, isn't it? So, it is, it is. Yeah. Um, did you like that... So Ash called it Son of Cain. And then she's like... She calls it a son of a bitch later. So basically, she's calling Cain a bitch. Damn. Um, and he's dead. And, he and he's dead. dead, yeah. Rip. But yeah, I was thinking how bad I feel for the two like mechanics of the that that ship because, like everyone, I'm sure has a hard job of things on the on the Nostromo. But you know, something goes wrong and fucking Parker and um, you know Brett, Brett have to. It, they're responsible, right? They have to fix everything, anything that goes wrong, and they're all like, "Hurry up, get it, get it done!" You know, do the job, and they're like, "Oh, fucking hell, okay." I, I, it's a huge ship and they have such a huge responsibility, you know, and they're just... I love the bit when they're, like, arguing with Ripley about, you know, discussing the, the shares, shares in, a, yeah. in a somewhat joking way. Yes! And it turns out all the steam that's coming out, they can just turn off. Yeah, 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 yeah I love that. <laughs> but she also says in a very, haha, what the fuck, premonition kind of way, you get whatever's coming to you, and I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> no. Damn. I was like, damn, Ripley, that's cold. <laughs> oh, I love it. I think it's so stylistic. I think it's, like I said, I think it's so well paced. Uh, I, I like the characters. Like, yeah, some of them are unlikable, but that's, you know, the point. And they, they, they portrayed those characters very well mm. in that regard. And even, the, even to the cat, down to the cat, I was like... <laughs> Oh, like what a good boy! This is such what a good a movie. What a fucking amazing little man! He uh, is resilient. I'm, I'm just, I'm just really happy that they, uh, they kept him alive. That's the, that's the best, the best For fucking now. thing, isn't it? Well, you know, I hate it when films have a little sort of like dog or a pet or a cat, oh, or whatever. God, I am legend. Yeah, yeah, you know, and it's like. Oh, please don't kill the ant. Please, come on. Leave, let, there is let a website. Leave. Maybe you know about it. It's called Does, Does the Dog <laughs> Die? Yeah. Oh no! Um, if you're worried, you know about an animal or a kid dying, or there being like particular kind of gore, like maybe um, maybe you've twisted your ankle or cut your hand recently, and you're very sensitive to those kind of things. You can check to see if there's anything like that in the film that you're watching. So, you know, it lets you know of, of you know, triggers in, in films. Because, like, maybe you don't like things happening to teeth. You don't like, you know, um, Oculus, for example, with uh, Karen Gillan. She, she eats, like, a light bulb thinking it's an apple. Oh. And it's all, <coughs> all this blood coming out of her mouth. Maybe you don't want to see things like that. And, you know... This website does the dog die dot com will warn you about certain things in films, mm. very specific things. Um, yeah, like I don't like you know, if you don't like spiders, for example, it will it will warn you. I don't you like know? nail horror, finger horror. I don't like any of that stuff. Uh, yeah, it's, ugh, yeah it makes... fingernails <laughs> being pulled off. Oh, <laughs> eyes. <laughs> Anything happening to eyes can be another cringy one. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh um, god, that's awful. Yeah, I don't know. I've, I've, don't want to I've... watch much Fulci if you if you have a thing about mm. eyes. Yeah. Jesus oh. Christ. Oh yeah, he says. What does he say? He says 
uh, I admire its purity, its sense of survival, unclouded by conscious remorse or delusions of morality. Very big words to say about this organism that, like, yeah, he's done, like, a couple scientific sort of a bit of testing on it, but that should tell you, you sound everything. sound like a psycho, my dude. You sound like a psycho. And yeah. I love his, his final words, where he says, I can't lie to you about your chances, but you have my sympathies. Yeah. Cute yeah. bastard. You fucking bastard. Where he's like, oh, it looks man. like he's just had like um, a wax all over his face. I like how they Come. like were trying to prop. Yeah, well, I like how they were like trying to prop him up uh, when his like head got detached and they were trying to spark up the inside of his brain um, to get yeah. him to, to function again. It looks so funny. <laughs> it looks. I so thought it was so clever funny. the 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 sort of transition from. <laughs> dummy head to yes um ian holm ian holm's actual head like the, the it was quite it was pretty smooth it was very smooth very clever and even 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 in the remaster you know obviously sometimes when things get upscaled or when you when there's like an increase in frames and in, in something that's old, you know, sometimes it can look a bit jank, look a bit shit, yeah. right? Yeah, because it's not made to look so fast or look so crisp. And I never there was maybe like a couple scenes where I thought, oh, okay, you can see too much of that, and it looks a bit jank. But there wasn't a lot of moments in the remaster where no. I thought it looked out of place or it looked shit. I think I think it helps that you only see. I think it's. The alien is only in shot for two minutes out of the whole running time of one hour fifty seven of the yeah. film. You barely see it. Yeah, that's that's so, what's good about it, because it's like practical effects. Cause it is just a tall guy in a rubber suit. It is. Um, at the yeah. end of the day. A very tall guy. Very tall guy. I don't like how like special effects have ruined a lot of I guess like mystery around because I, I don't know if they still use the rubber if they still use the suit in the second one. I assume they probably did, but the more CGI gets more advanced, stuff like that just becomes a bit like it doesn't have the same scary effect for me. I feel like it just mm. it does it doesn't it doesn't have the same sort of feel to it. Quick little uh, shout out to Balaji Bad Badejo. Don't know how to pronounce yes. his name. Very sorry. The he died the, at the alien 30, design, yeah. He died at 39. Poor bloke, he oh, was geez. in this. But he was seven foot he was tall. Six, six foot ten, it says here. Six foot ten. 2.15 2. Um, metres. Um, tall. Tall man. He was tall a graphic man. designer from Lagos. He, and he had sickle cell anemia. Did he do graphic design for menus? Little heat reference there. I know, I know. I was waiting Fuck for Booth to say something. Oh, I, I didn't. I can't on. remember that film. Uh, I can't. Yeah, remember she it. does. She does. They're gonna power to forget it. Uh, so he did Alien and Omnibus. What? what? Omnibus. Well, he was a xenomorph in that. Poor, poor guy. No one. That's yeah. that's way too young. And very. Sickle cell anemia is a horrible disease, and oh, but Jesus. I'm glad that he's he's uh, sort of immortalised in, mm. in this, and uh, you know he should get get some recognition and some credit for he, he you know for being a very tall man <laughs> in a rubber for suit for being a very tall yeah. man in a rubber suit, a very. Uh... Very convincing alien. Mm. Convincing. Ah. Yes. Very convincing alien. Yeah, I think the the most you see of the alien is when it's getting like launched out of the ship. You can see it's like full body scale and the way he's like wriggling about in in, in space and It was, was very funny. funny. You could tell it was a man in a suit. Um Yeah, at that point end. you could tell. Yeah. When he flops out tell. of the the escape pod bit and it, you know i mean the you know it's the shot is kind of distorted with the you know the engines going and everything to try and mask it a bit i think well there's a lot of like yeah, um, yeah there's a lot you know when it comes to these sorts of films there, there's always that that they're still trying to build that horror element and the suspense and they're always like 
you know, like when she was near that fan that was cutting off the light and it was kind of strobing a little bit, right? All the strobing oh, yeah, yeah. was very cool. Like I, yeah, it has to be said the the sound design and the the, the cinematography is absolutely just just perfect. The whole outstanding everything, every shot is done so nicely, but the lighting in yes. particular is really good because the, it uses light in such a clever way it does um, everything's really really wet and shiny on this mm-hmm. this, this ship in this <laughs> film and the, the i love the use of the the laser through the the fog uh mm. when oh. they discover the when they discover shout the out eggs. to the who yeah shout out <laughs> to who thanks for the laser um <laughs> but it makes it look like a a solid floor almost or like something that he's wading through to get there um, can can we briefly <clears throat> talk about the sound design with the eggs because there's mm. weird whispering when kane is looking in the egg really and, he, and you can see the tiny thing moving around inside the egg i didn't hear and any there's whispering like, there's whispering voices it's so fucking creepy i did not hear whispering that's Fucking crazy. You're gonna have to rewatch that scene. Uh, make sure you got headphones on. Yeah. It's fucking wild. Why would there be whispering though? That's bizarre. Yeah, you're barely able to tell that it is whispering. Mm. But yeah, I um the the lighting, as Booth was saying, is just done so masterfully. I think one of my favorite shots of the film was when Ripley was climbing down a ladder with the flamethrower. And no. it's very, it's like very sort of, like very dark in there, but the, the lighting is very yellowish. And that's where she discovers, obviously, her crewmates that are sort of gooped onto the wall. <laughs> gooped? Um, they're gooped everywhere. That's and, so goopy. Um, I love that shot. I love that shot so much. I thought it was such a nice shot of the film. It's quite iconic. It's quite an iconic shot of Ripley looking badass. Oh, she's great. She's such Before a Before she, she like runs off in a panic. <laughs> yeah. I really like her character. I think like all the characters were done so well and it has nothing to do with her gender or anything. I don't care. Like man woman, she's a fucking badass. She, she portrays it so well. She acts like yeah, she panics here and there, but you know. I mean her gender is like a key thing to not just this film but like sequels and in what way yeah i i i haven't seen the sequels in in a while but the whole point is you've got like this this cock headed alien thing right that, um with the you know the the face hugger that penetrates into your body you've got right. the the that second mouth that that penetrates into your face face fucks you essentially okay um it's not subtle about its its imagery of um, uh, rape, basically, and um, monk s. Yeah. Okay, it's it's not subtle. Um, I mean, I get, I know what you're saying, and I agree with you. You you have Ash shoving something into her throat in order to try and kill her. Sure. You know, whilst there's pictures of naked ladies in the background. It's, so what? Yeah. What? So what? I understand what you're saying. So her being a woman is and surviving is very important. Also, it qualifies her as a final girl in it, a slasher I was think, movie. I was thinking that. Yeah. Interesting. This was um, and you know, I, I'm. This is a personal opinion, but it's the other time when actresses didn't have to be like this. The lead actress didn't have to be like this perfectly gorgeous, sexy yes. woman. Like the Sigourney Weaver and Jamie Lee Curtis, and they're they're not yes. traditionally well. Like nowadays, everybody has this Hollywood look, and if I, you could just see the look on my face when you said those words about Sigourney Weaver and Jamie Lee Curtis, they not, are good no, looking, wait, listen, but they're not the traditional. You know, traditionally they're not like... attractive, like like film star looking women. And it was at a time when I could tell people apart much easier because everybody looked yes. distinct. Different, yeah. And it was much better that way. And it makes people 
more attractive in that way. Did you have you seen Trading Places? Yes, with Jamie Lee Curtis. Yeah, right. Trading Places is that the one with the stock market? Trading Places. She does. It's it's early Jamie Lee Curtis, and she does take her top off. Dude, yeah. ha, tr- Jamie Lee Curtis in True Lies. Oh, oh. My God, she is smoking. <laughs> she's having, she's having one. She's having, she one. Is having smo- one. No, but like, what Biff is saying is correct. They are attractive, but they're not the you know the they're stereotypical not big, blonde, big titted, boobalicious babes. Big lips, sort of small nose. Um, like that, everybody starts yeah. looking the same because there's this look that people seem to want to cast in everything. And I can't yes. tell the difference between people anymore because everybody's right. getting surgery to look a certain way as well. But also, basically, cast... they don't look like Galaxina. <laughs> they don't look like Galaxina. Um, oh. But yeah, like it's the same with with male actors as well. Like lead actors the blue of the seventies. Yeah, mm. lead actors of the seventies are so different to the fucking Chris Hemsworth. Lead actors in the seventies just look like fucking trolls dragged up. Oh, you got your like your Kurt Russell, who was very you know. Oh, he was yeah, he was still hubba but, hubba. Yeah, sure. But then everybody starts looking the same. The, the like the further into the nineties and like noughties you get, and it's it's like I can't I fail to tell the difference between people now. Like the right, I I, I, agree. I can't I tell. I think that's the, the face blindness. No, so. no, no, I do agree. I agree with Biff on this. Like, I do still have face blindness in old movies, obviously, but it's a lot worse now because everybody starts to sort of blur into the same. But like, I will never get face blindness for Sigourney Weaver or Jamie Lee yes. Curtis because they are memorable looking. You know. Yes. <laughs> look at this BuzzFeed article. These actors that just look the same. Oh, please send them. Margot up. Robbie and Emma Mackey. I don't even know who Emma Mackey is. Oh, she's the but... one I think who plays in Sex Education. I might be wrong because I know she, she looks, looks like Margot Robbie. Is yeah, insane. Yeah. But yeah, the, the, oh there my... are people that look super similar to each other. And I think the first, the first, the first um, example is Gene Wilder and. Someone called Jeremy Allen White, and I know Gene Wilder. You can tell Gene Wilder, and that. Oh my god! Yeah, that's the first guy on the list. You're like you're right. handsome, isn't Gene Wilder a handsome man? He is. He's he's like, it's it, He's so unique looking. And yeah. then you've got his big two blue people eyes. I've never heard of. Bill Skarsgård does not look like Steve Buscemi. It's the eyes. He's well, got eye bags. A that's little it. bit. It's, I yeah, think, he's got I think full lips. I think as well, Steve Buscemi and is. Younger age, yes, probably. Mm. It's the eyes for sure. And, and then, then you've got Javier Bardem and Jeffrey Dean Morgan, who look fucking identical. Like it's insane how yeah. much alike they it's look. It's the nose that sort of. And they've all got the same style as well, though. Like mm. everybody's got the same style, and everybody's got a similar face, and because that's what yeah. that's what sells. That's what people are gonna want to look at. And oh my. god God, they put number twelve Nat- Natalia Dyer, lady, and Timothy Chalamet. Chalamet, yeah, a man. <laughs> I don't think that's because of the a... chin. It's because of the. They chin. do look the same though. Look at it's that face chin. structure. It's the face structure. It's insane. It's the cheekbones. It's look at the cheekbones yeah. as well. The cheekbones. The cheekbone. The cheekbone. Sorry, not the, the cheekbones. Cheekbone. The jaw structure. Yeah. And they've got Chase Stokes and Debbie Ryan, two people I've never heard of, but two people that don't look anything alike. <laughs> yeah, well, they don't. That's a bit of a stretch. Millie Bobby Brown and Natalie Portman. Yeah, they've they've both got their hair slicked back. That's slick a, back. That's... Yeah. Duh. Oh, and then, apparently, uh, Sophia Lauren and Sophia Vergara. No. Apparently, it's not really. Even no. though Sophia Lauren has like a straight chin, and then you've got Sophia Vergara with like a pointy chin, but yeah, Nonsense, they're the same. Isn't it? But Nonsense. everybody, you know, I was, what was I? What was I watching like ages ago? It was just like people were hired to do films on their acting capabilities, and now everybody is uh, Chris Pratt. Chris Pratt is in every film now. 
You, you need stars. You need stars to put their name on a poster. People recognize them. They're like, oh, I like Chris Pratt. Oh, you know, I like Aubrey Plaza. I'll go and see that weird film that she's in. An Evening nobody with Beverly went, Loughlin. Nobody went, nobody went to see Beverly Loughlin. It was just people like me. It's all but, the. It's like the 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 guys who look the same, right? So you got your me. Chris Hemsworth. Oh my god, Chris, yeah, look Chris, 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 and Chris. Yeah, all the They're Chris's all Chris's. look the same. <laughs> all the Chris. Hemsworth, Pine, Pratt, and the other one. Evans. His name? Evans. Yeah. Evans. If Evans. you asked me to tell them apart, I could. I couldn't. I could tell Chris Pratt because his face is on everything all the time, and is yeah. Hemsworth like? Is he Thor? He's Thor, yeah. Okay, Sophie, j- just go back to yesterday. You're lying face down. You got your ass out. <laughs> your boobs are almost out. Yeah. And there's a knock on the window behind you. <laughs> you turn your head. <laughs> you turn your head, and there's a like a brunette man, quite right. handsome, with a bit of a beard. Right. And it's one of the Chris's. Do you think you'd be able to tell which one it was? They're quite far away. Was it quite far away, the window? No, it was, like, pretty close up. Okay. Do you think you if could tell? If he had glasses on, it'd be, it'd be Alex Smith. Right. Yeah, and if he was very uh, tall. From Hat Films. From Hat Films. Right. I would. I, there okay. is no fucking way, because all of those guys, <laughs> all of those Chris's, just look like men. They may as well be a grey blob. <laughs> Like walking they down the look street, like they blend. The protagonist of any game, any AAA game, any AAA comes out. game, That's any movie, and just anything. The most, the most popular tab in Baldur's Gate Three is is one of those Chris's. Yeah, it's. I want just... to look up male eight eighties male actors. I want to see the differences. So you got your Harrison Ford, you got your Robert De Niro. You're you're finding a lot of handsome men. You want to look at what Charles Bronson looks like. Yes, um, holy shit. Yes. Now, uh, but not not the <laughs> crazy, not the crazy guy with a mustache that's in prison. Not him. <laughs> Willem keep... Dafoe. Willem Dafoe. Uh, Weird looking man. Yeah, John Malkovich. Um, Weird looking man. Daniel Day Lewis. Sure. Very iconic looking. Th- there's even like, um, do you know what was a, a very funny time when? There was eighties movies, and they had they had girls in it, and they were just like, "We're just gonna cast a Playboy actress, aka Galaxina." Yeah, the, the, it was just that <laughs> happened so often, and you know they weren't they they all sort of blended together as well. That was the look for them, but they were just there for the yeah. tits. They, that's all mm. they were. You know what I thought was hot in the eighties? What was hot in the eighties? Brooke Shields. Brooke Shields was hot. Oh God, probably still is to be fair, but she was. hot. Hot. It's a little bit of a monkey rest, G Star Games. Wait, why? What did she do? What did she do? What's she done? Well, um, she. So, she was in a movie when she was 11 years old in which she was naked. Oh, is this the Blue mm. Lagoon? And, no, this is before that. Um, and then there was, there was that. Um, yeah, she was sexualized from a very, very early. Well, age. I'm not talking about that. Jesus, I'm talking about when she's no, like she was very older. Pretty. Yeah, she was very attractive. I loved her eyebrows. I, you know, she thought she was very pretty. She got great but, eyebrows. Yeah, very do, you, who, iconic... do you know who else has great eyebrows? What's the late Sarah? Uh, what's the lady from Jennifer Co- Connelly? Connelly. She <gasps> I from love Labyrinth. Jennifer Connelly. She was very. She had nice eyebrows. She was very pretty, and she was very recognizable in a, in that way you know yes gorgeous lovely whose daughter is she something connell who's the who's her dad well brian connelly yeah the it's a puppy guy he's a puppy he's in equilibrium <laughs> <laughs> anyway um is there anything else that we want to talk about with alien before we move on to our final um, thoughts let me just let me just scroll through my. Yeah, I've got notes. Go for your notes. This is very this is very unorthodox of us. I'm I'm you know. Uh, I said that uh, mother the room that mother was in was the Big Brother diary room. Oh my god! Gear and the Nostromo. <laughs> Ripley has got mad at Lambert 
for bringing on board <laughs> a, a, an alien life form. <laughs> Oh my god. That's brilliant. Ash has come to the oh. diary room to sabotage the mission. <laughs> <laughs> That's so good. And I kept calling mother motherfucker. Um, nice. Damn. I loved anything with the cat. I liked it when they shot Kane yes. out of the airlock. That was fucking brilliant. Whee! They shot Dead Kane body. out of the... It was yeah, his they funeral. Just, they they just... were... They yeeted his dead body out into space. Oh, I like, they torched any... him. No, no, they. I mean, no. they, they just wrapped him in a he blanket. He was in an airlock. Any last words, and everyone was like, "Oh yeah, no, no, no one said anything." Was, yeah, nobody yeah. liked him that much. And then off he goes. And when brutal, uh, uh, right? Uh, I did write down. Um, Parker says this place gives me the creeps, and I was like, "Yeah," because one guy has an acid man on his face. Uh, mm. I said that lighter plus deodorant would have got the, the face hugger off him. Just get a lighter, yeah. some deodorant, just go... And then I said, toss the whole man out, which they did. In the, in the, <laughs> they, they did. Um, Ash says, you do your job, let me do mine to Ripley. And I was saying, but you didn't let her do her job. Yeah, you interfered. He was, he was interfering, Fucker. wanker. There was no security cameras, which you would maybe think i mean well, this makes me so grateful to live in such a nanny state as great britain where every square inch of the uk has cctv we could if we could track Wayland, Yolandi got got they got rid of the security cameras when they look back at the footage and it's all just members of the crew masturbating yeah the yeah, fuck? But you know you get used to that it deletes itself after a while um and uh ash apparently like so when it the thing, the face hugger, falls off his face, right? And and Ash is like, "Oh no, we need to study this. It's not going to be a zombie." And I'm thinking, "You know, fuck all about this life form. You said that." Yeah, that was funny he, though. I'm saying that. It's not going to come back as a uh, zombie. Uh, it's, but it's how not do you gonna... know you? Yeah, he doesn't know. It's basically it's got like regeneration of cells, and it can withstand any sort of extreme temperatures and conditions. It's got acid for blood, but no, it's not going to come back to life. What are you on about? Um, I did write down a question. Oh. They set off very quickly. Like, they hadn't even finished fixing everything. Would they have mm. had a better outcome if they'd have stayed on the moon for longer? Like, would there have been any change in the outcome of what happened? Would they have all just left the ship? Yeah. <laughs> but like, then what? Well, no, oh, I don't know. Don't... Like, it might have. They might have been able to like kite it off the ship and kite it like an MMO. Yeah, yeah, like, just a, kite like it. a hunter in World of Warcraft. Yeah, exactly. They just tag it occasionally. Got the DPS. I to think. Just fucking... I think the way that they handled it was just so poor. Like they scattered. For some reason, they you know, they up. never they, stuck they together. They had plans. They had a bunch of plans, get, you know, using the air vents to try and narrow it down, thinking they were just after a tiny little alien. Like, they I had the flamethrowers. Could... They had the tracking devices. Hold on, hold on. They had I could electric not... cattle prod things. They had nets to catch it with. No, they, were... no, they did not have no, nets, plural. No, but Parker no. had a net. Right. Yeah. They, and they split up, and basically, how many trackers did they have? One. They split One. up, and they gave the tracker to Ripley, the net to Parker, and they were on the same team. <laughs> what did the yeah. other guys have? Fucking nothing. Yeah. Right? So, what the fuck was Lambert and was it Parker who were down in in like the bowels of the ship, uh, and they were like Brett. fucking around? No. Brett. Was it Brett? Coolant. Yeah. So, what were they doing? They were just gathering coolant. For what? To freeze it? To put on the shuttle because I don't know. Question mark? Question mark? That's what I'm saying. No, they, like, they, they needed just... the ox. So the air support, the air supply needed coolant to okay to function. Right, but because right. they they there were too many people who were going to be on the shuttle. Yeah, um, so I think it's right. only supports two, and there were three of them that were going to be on. Any I just cat. I just think obviously there was like an element of self uh, of sabotage right from Ash because he's he's trying to. You know, keep this thing alive and find it and blah, 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 right? But everyone else was very scatterbrained. Like, I don't know what they were doing. Um, everyone was panicking and they 
you know, they're not soldiers. They're trying to make the best out of the situation and trying to deal with it. And they did come up with plans and they, and they came up with like weapons to use because obviously they couldn't shoot it because of the acid blood. So they, they tried their best, but they were just, they were hope, hopelessly outmatched by this fucking supreme killing machine monster. And Mother wasn't giving them any information on how to kill it or get rid of it or what the chances were. But they, I, I wrote, demonstrate the cattle prod on Ash. Um, <laughs> and I, I wrote down, so they only found one, like, skin when it shed its skin, and I and mm. Brett found it, and I wrote down, ooh, sexy latex underwear. And then he <laughs> oh stood... Oh, my God. Why was the... Uh, he was in the place where he got killed, basically, and it was, like, raining. It, everything was wet. Yeah. Was it just being cooled or something? It was con- condensation? Yeah, or? So, yeah, it's condensation from all the cooling. Um, but all the loose chains are a bit weird. Yeah. And a bit hellraisery. Yeah, a little bit. Um, he was wearing a corset at one point. The guy who had the face hugger on him, Kane. Uh, oh, did you not notice when they like when he came out of his little coma? He it looked like he was wearing like the weird little corset. But I think a lot of their uh, uniforms have corset like designs on them. Um, I think it's they, just that's just part of John Hurt's. You know, he has to wear that. It's a girdle. You know, it's like, mm. um, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's like um, James T. Kirk was always wearing one as well. Right. You know, it wasn't the character that needed it. It was the actor. <laughs> I see, I see. Keep the belly in. I wrote down that Ash, Ash gave Parker a titty twister when they were having a fight. Um, nice. <laughs> he was doing the excessive robot hands. Imagine you're doing the dance, the robot, right? You put your hands together with all your fingers together and you go, eh, eh, eh. And Ash was doing that when he was he right. had no head. He's going eh eh. Um, that I, head came I, off real easy, didn't it? It did. Well, you know, it did come off really. And easy. also, he didn't like. I don't. He wasn't made of metal or anything. He was like plastic underneath. He was just a plasticky robot. They were really cutting costs. This is the company yeah. all over. You know, they didn't want to pay. Just made of rubber and cum. So that's it. Aren't we all? To be honest. Yeah, true. Um so I mean this this is kind of skipping forward a little bit, but I just I love, 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 love this game with all of my heart. Alien isolation is okay. this is literally the last part of the I know, podcast. I know, but skipping I skipping to Okay, I'm sorry. I'll, I'll we haven't leave even it done the trivia end. yet. I'll leave it or to the final end. thoughts. I'll leave it to the Come end. Come on, we've got to have a system. Sorry, sorry. What else was there? I love how, like, yeah, just very, like, late 70s, the vibe of the film, you know, is very, uh, it's sort of early 80s with the fucking Hawaiian shirts and the, and the headbands mm. and the incessant smoking. Um, the mechanical keyboards and the weird little yeah, monitors and stuff. All great. Fucking love those. VHS, to, it was like the pause, they had a, it had a scan line on it. And static yes. and everything. Beautiful. Beautiful. It's gorgeous. I think so much of the design and ev- it's so well thought out. Like even I don't know if it if it was like everything was, but it just everything feels like down to a T, well thought out, well planned out, well designed. I think it's such a fucking good film. And it really like 40 something years later, it just stands the test of time. That's the important thing that I was going to say. They thought about it back then. They mm. they were like, I think I think that's one reason why it holds up. It's like they made it so that it was very down to earth, but they didn't put anything that was too out there, um, mm. futuristic. Like, oh, everything's gonna no teleporting, ha- n- no teleportation, yeah. no fucking like weird gadgets, laser guns, laser guns, all this shit. They were they were like well realistically, you know it's they go, it's going to be one of the grottiest grubbiest things. They're going to cut costs. Nobody's going to have anything that different. But they they've just mm. kept it very low key, and so that's why it's aged really well. Mm. Um, yeah, and it's they've forty five years. See, this Jeez. film forty five years old. That's, unbelievable. Yeah, it is unbelievable. That's old. It's, it's, 
that's real old. Uh, I'm 45 years old. I was going to say, I'm like, how old are you? <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. Fuck. Do you want to summarize our final thoughts? Because we're kind of doing it now. Sure. G, this was your film. Um, yeah, like I said, I think it's a, a brilliant film. I the mu- that, like from the music, the sound design, the ca- mm. the costume design, the sets, the the all the props. Like, I mean, the remaster just shows how good it is. You know, like I said, a lot of remasters can make it look a bit dated, make something look a bit shit, and it just did none of that. And you know, even if you look in the background of certain shots. You can see just how much thought and and how much character is, you know, it's obviously a very clinical looking setting, but you can see loads of things from the set design to, to, to every, like it's so well thought out. It's fucking such a good film and the acting and the plot and just everything. But I, it's such a good film. And I feel like they just don't make I mean, I don't know, it might sound like like a broken broken record at this point, but I don't know. I feel like they Hollywood just would not be able to replicate something like this anymore. Cause everything just feels a little bit it's it's a different filming style, right? And it's it it doesn't I feel like something today, if it was to try to replicate something like this, which obviously they do, it there's something about it, it doesn't have any personality. It just feels I guess, like, well, the good analogy have, is to... What? We have Prometheus and Covenant as well. And I don't recently. like those. I don't like them. Because th- I just feel like they don't have any any personality to them. I think I a agree. lot of modern cinema, and I'm not saying all, but there's a lot of, you know, with the filming style and obviously, you know, the hen- the, the the leaning on CGI too much and the leaning on all mm. these things that just take away character. Everything is far too planned and coordinated that it just feels planned and coordinated. Whereas something like Alien feels like, yeah, probably planned and coordinated, but it feels like it has life and personality to it. Um Yeah. But yeah, I, I love this film. I think it's fantastic. A great sci-fi. Um, I'll, I'll it's a nine from me. Nine out of ten. G Star yeah. Games. Grief. Great film. Um, Sophie, do you want to go next? Sure. Um, or are you busy typing? I was busy typing because I really wanted to find a gif of uh, Ripley like throwing the cat box around. Do you know what she's rolling it? <laughs> I just, yeah, I just yeah, wanted. Yeah. That's what I was searching for. I couldn't find it. So that, that really I'm gonna stuck have to in my head. Wee! Just roll him. Just try and get him in there. <laughs> just fucking get that boy. Fuck it. Um, just get him in yeah. there. At the end, I did want to see him snoozing peacefully in her arms. You know, when I she was, was hoping she cuddled that too. him. She cuddled she him, but cuddled she put him. him in the fridge on his own, which made sure he was safe. Sure, because when she opened the airlock at the end, and he went firing out. But can. You imagine if she was in the same hypersleep chamber as Jonesy and like that she's discovered at the start of Aliens and it's like she has a face hugger on her face, but it's oh actually my God, Jonesy. It's Jonesy. Oh no. Beautiful boy. Because they are kinda like face huggers, aren't they? Cats. Yeah. Yeah. Brenda has uh, decided to try her best to suffocate me. Like any mm. chance she gets. She wants to get as close to me as possible, which means getting on my face i i love i love it it fucking it's brilliant but i think if if uh if we had that i'd get woken up by jonesy pawing me in the face hello <laughs> hello wake <laughs> up hello hello are you, are you asleep can i i'm hungry uh i'm hungry so please wake up i thought this film has a lot going for it and despite its length and despite the fact that nothing you know, you know, nothing happens for a lot of it. It feels like mm. there's a lot more happening than, say, Jaws, because right. that was, it's a different sort of suspense in a way. And when it got picked, I was like, "Oh, fucking hell! I can't be asked with this because 
It's like I'd seen so many parodies and so many piss takes and some like in the years. It must be a few years since I saw it, and then like, you watch so many things that have parodied it. And yeah, yeah. Spaceballs. You've got like a fatigue for it. And then you you've got the the sequels, and it's like oh, yeah, I can't be asked. But then I watch it and I think actually yeah, that's a solid. That is a solid film. Like the mm-hmm. lighting, all the shots. Are lovely the sets are really good the miniatures are fab the practical effects they did really well the lighting and the sound design and even the music like for orchestral Oof. music it was lovely really nice um and i gave it an 8.5 out of 10 jesus it's not like one of my favorite films but i do like it mm. but i can do without watching it you know very often i like yep. it it's fine but you know that's it, it's one of those tricky tricky scores because it's a lot going for it but for some reason i don't really you know love it love it mm-hmm. god this might be your highest rated film great bloody cat in it fucking amazing cat jonesy what a just boy. gives Ooh, so many points what a stupid bloody film. man i i gave it 10 ah. i gave it 10 my first my first 10 um Sheesh. It's one of my favorite films. I I it could be a perfect film. Damn. It's I I mean I've watched this film maybe a dozen times and I do love like everything about it. Um mm. just the the grimy setting, the the characters that ch- are joking and chatting away and then just being shitty to each other. Yeah, like the next scene, <laughs> um, the um, like the set design, the creature design by H.R. Geiger is just fantastic. Jerry Goldsmith did the music, and it's amazing. So good. Like every every moment from like the the opening titles are iconic. Um, the 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 pacing of the film is just fantastic. The slow build up of tension, um, the the quite small setting. And small cast and a fantastic cast. It's just insane, insanely good cast. Um, just these these different phases of this alien mm. and and how they struggle to deal with it at every point. They they they're hopelessly out of their depth, and almost everyone dies. And it, that that's great in a horror movie having that kind of asymmetrical situation. Um, it really is like a slasher movie. Yeah. Um, but in space, but it's way space. better than a slasher movie. In, in I would sense. say it's I would say it's better than Jason X, which is another <laughs> slasher movie in space. Um, Jason X. We'll have to watch that one day. Um, I love I love horror movies. Um, being fond of science fiction since I was a little boy, and horror sci fi merged together is wonderful um mm. we previously watched the fly um event horizon is one of my favorite films as well mm-hmm. um although i i you know it's certainly not on this tier um it's still a favorite of mine mm. um i just i just love the the combination of dirty space things and and a monster yeah and this is just perfect for that um yeah 10 10 out of 10 no, wow. no question about it. Wow. Um, ins- insanely highly scoring film from Yomp. Yeah, uh, yeah. Good score all around. I think this might be our, our highest rated uh, film. Crazy. Yeah. Absolutely crazy. So thank you, G Star Games. Thank you for picking this. You're welcome. Have you got some trivia for us, Simon? Xenomorph has four minutes of screen time, not two. Oh. I was wrong. Um, the uh, screenwriter Dan O'Bannon had previously made Dark Star with John Carpenter. Yes. Um, and it had the spray, the spray painted rubber beach ball with uh, horrible claws glued yep. to it, like from a werewolf costume. And he was like, do you know what? It would be good if I did a film like this, but one that was actually like a horror movie and not a comedy. I fucking love Dark Star. Um, like a similar setting of these guys on a spaceship, it's got know, a, a small cast. It's got such 
it's got the same vibe as uh, as Dark Star. Like they're chill. Yeah. They've got the stick. They've got the pin up girls on the wall. There's just these guys hanging out, smoking, having coffee, and just they find an alien <laughs> and yeah. they bring it on board. It's like it's a fantastic film, is that? Oh my god, I can see some amazing facts, amazing trivia. Shredded condoms were used to create tendons of the beast's ferocious jaw. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the f- uh, what was it about the face hugger? Oh, so the dead face hugger that Ash autopsies was made using fresh shellfish, four oysters, and a sheep kidney to recreate yeah. the yeah. internal organs. It's very, ob- very obviously an oyster that he's yeah, poking yeah, yeah. at. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it does. The original title of this film in uh, Dan O'Bannon's early drafts, it was Star Beast. Oh, cool. But he wasn't happy with it. And then he read through the script and just saw that the word alien was in it over and over and over again. I thought that would work as a title. And there wasn't a movie just called Alien. That's so, fascinating, honestly, that there, were, that there wasn't. Because it's such a simple, very common word, right? So... Mm. Yeah, it works though. I prefer Alien over Star Beast. Yeah, yeah Star Beast is definitely. a very like that's a typical seventies sci-fi movie yes. name, and it yeah. would have ended up making it feel like um, a shitty B movie than than yeah. it deserves. I want to watch. Be. I want to watch a movie called Star Beast. I would watch that in a fucking second. Well, really, just, you can watch Galaxy Invader. That. Or yeah, the yeah, alien, I love that. Yeah, yeah. alien factor. Well, I guess it, it, you look. You have to look at like single word titles over double or triple word titles. Is like, there a does film it... called Come? Uh, there's a film called Come for Dinner. It's a porno. Oh, I just thought it was really oh. funny. Jesus, Come for Dinner. That, I just oh, think it's no, so fucking no. funny that they called. They call the oh, porno that. Like, it's that's just ridiculous. horrible. I know, isn't it awful? Oh no, I was just thinking like actually come for dinner, not actual come for dinner. They were last yeah, the, see, that's the, the, the play on, on words. It works on two uh, levels. I haven't actually watched yeah. it, but it's in the collection. It's just hanging out. I, I want to see your review on uh, Redbox or whatever it's called. Letterboxd. Or Letterboxd. Whatever. Come for dinner. Letterboxd. Um, the blue laser lights in the alien ship's egg chamber were borrowed from The Who. We did reference this earlier. You did, Thank yeah. you, The Who. Um, the band were testing out their stage show on the sound soundstage next door at Shepperton Studios, and so they just borrowed the lasers from them. Pretty cool. I think that's awesome. Uh, I, like, I like how this... So Barbara Gibbs came up with the famed tagline, in space, no one can hear you scream. Mm-hmm. Very cool. And, or can uh, purchase a replacement spider plant. <laughs> For the filming of the chest burst scene, the crew members knew the creature would be bursting out of John Hurt and had seen the puppet, but they'd not been told that fake blood would also be bursting out in every direction from high pe- pressure pumps and squibs. The scene was shot in one take. Citation needed. I think it's it was actually not, two It was takes. not... It was done in two takes. Yeah. It was filmed uh, twice because was... the chest burster did not make it through Kane's shirt at first. Sag. 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 Uh, so there was an artificial torso with John Hurt's head and arm sticking out underneath the table. Um, and when the chest burster came out with a puppeteer holding with like a stick up his ass, um, blood went all over Veronica Cartwright, who's Lambert, and... She apparently just fell to the floor in hysterics. That wasn't her acting. That's just her reaction to having blood flying all over her. You could tell that was a genuine um, reaction <laughs> to being covered in like, sh- shit. Very highly strung woman um, yeah. in a lot of horror movies. Crazy. Um, and Tom Skerritt, who played Dallas, said, what you saw on camera was the real response. She had no idea what the hell happened. All of a sudden, this thing just came up. Um, Which could be, there's a penis joke there somewhere. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it feels like we have to say that, the chestburster thing. Yeah, it's a good good little piece of trivia. 
literally my mum my mum looked exactly like Ellen Ripley in the 80s I've attached some oh photos. my god <laughs> my mum had the same haircut um oh my god and and lots of what cats what the fuck holy shit you i mean i know she's your mum but like fuck but me you, you guys are I, like her. you yeah, guys are <laughs> identical man like oh. you were cloned jesus I've, yep 100 percent. i don't think i've ever seen like a, a a child look like a parent more than <laughs> you and lady Oh my gosh! Like there, there are pictures of her as a kid and me as a kid, and we look exactly the same. That's yeah, this. literally. Uh, Here we go. Call off the uh, the twenty one and me testing. Got any more triv? Hmm. There's loads of good trivia for this. Um, it's all really good, but a lot of it isn't worth saying. Well, so to preserve the shock <laughs> value of the aliens' appearance, no production images. Of it were released, not even to the author Alan Dean Foster, who wrote when he wrote the novelization. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so there's a lot of cool bits here and there. Um, That's good because, like these days, it would be in the fucking trailer. You'd see what the alien was. You'd see the whole film twenty times. You'd see the whole and film in the trailer. It would go bang. Uh, an alien is coming. Bang. It's, it's, trailers are so bangy and noisy now, aren't they? Yeah, they've all got this yeah. fucking honking noise. Oh my god. <laughs> honky noisy. They, they do, they're so annoying. I hate trailers these days. They are, they're awful. And like like I said, a lot of the time they spoil the whole film. They do so, spoil the yeah. whole film. I mean, to be like fair, they, they used to spoil the whole plot in general, but they were a lot more easy to digest. I just remember watching the trailer for it was the last film of the Da Vinci Code movies. I forget the fucking name of it, but oh God. I remember watching the trailer for that, and they literally just the whole film was in there. It was like a fucking four minute trailer. I'm like, what's the? I don't need to watch it anymore. I know what happens. <laughs> There's no point. <laughs> Imagine if they had like the the trailer for Dress to Kill, and it's like, hello, my name's Michael <laughs> Caine. It was me, dressed as a woman. What done it? <laughs> what is, like, <laughs> the fuck? I fucking Sorry love... for spoiling uh, Dress to Kill for anyone that was about oh, to watch it. Oh no, sound watchable um, now. Uh, the box office, budget box office G-Star Games. Uh, so the budget was $11 million, uh, which is a lot. Um, and the box office made a whopping 184 Point seven million, bingo. Which is the fucking budget amazing. for the time was a lot. Yeah, um, obviously yeah, this yeah, was yeah. forty five years ago. But I mean, my god, they made use of that budget, every dollar of it. They did. They did. It really shows as well. So, yeah, very um, good. And do you think this would make a good video game? G Star Games. Yeah, baby. Yes, it would. Uh, I, f- I mean, there's loads of alien games. Yeah, but there's one in particular. Oh, mate. Fucking love this game. I love it. So I've played it like two to three times all the way through. Uh, alien Isolation. If you've never played it, listeners, my God, play it. Like, if you love the alien movies, this is such a good game. From the sound design, which is iconic, to... Like I don't really like hide and seek type of games really. I'm not I don't love them. I hate hiding from you know in stealth and all that kind of shit, but this game does it really well. I um, and it, got bored of it because it didn't scare me. So I just sort of gave up. Not a lot of things scare Sophie. But yeah, but it's not it's not about being scared. It's about you know, navigating through this awful situation just like in the movie i guess i'll give it another go i think i think you play as uh sigourney you play as ripley's kid yeah ellen yeah Yeah. um daughter amanda yes uh it's fun it's great it's great like when you look at the actual like the 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 set and everything and the sound design is done really well and the xenomorph is fucking terrifying and you know just sort of comes out of nowhere 
you're on a space station in this one. And, yeah. Um, it's, Stuff has it's gone very to hell. Sim- you've got the similar things. You have like the, the, the tracking devices and shit, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Like the same sort of technology, like the med bays look the same. Um, but the difference is obviously you've got a lot of, um, there's, there's people around that, you know, that you do and don't know. Uh, but there's a lot of working Joes, and the working Joes are the 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 androids of that universe, and a lot of their they're hostile and they're awful as well. So you have to avoid the xenomorph, you have to deal with the the working Joes, and obviously any sort of humans that you run into as well. I love this game; it's such a such a good experience if you if you like you know Alien. Uh, can't attest to any of the other Alien games, but this one's well, good. I. I can. So I played um I played the Atari game, the the original Alien game. Oh my god. It's like Berserk and Pac-Man sort of mixed together. It's 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 just a it's an Atari game basically. And I played the um Aliens like side scrolly yeah. booger as well. But I booger. have the the side scrolly booger. I'm trying to find the the one which was was it Alien Resurrection? No, there was one of them where, and that was it. Was fine. It wasn't great. It wasn't great, but it wasn't bad. I think there's like also if you like um in in Alien Isolation, if you really want to be on edge, I think there's like a voice oh god activation type deal where I think you know if you make noise or if you scream or whatever, I think the alien can hear you. Hiding in a locker and suddenly your cat appears. Meow, meow. Hello. Oh fuck. <laughs> but yeah, I liked because like when when you know in the movie you know when he's like navigating in the vents, uh, like e- even down to the vents, like the design of the vent opening and the spiral and the flamethrower, like everything is so well done. It's it's a good ad- adaptation of a of a of a film, I guess, but like obviously it's not the plot of Alien, but it's a good it's a good universe and and everything that they've made really it fits well. So okay, cool, yeah. cool, good game. Oh gee, have you um changed your list? Have you replaced Alien with a different film? Uh, yeah. So I I replaced it with Mr. and Mrs. Smith. Oh my god! Oh, you fucking bitch. <laughs> with Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie. <laughs> Christ. Christ almighty. LeMayo. Sorry, Boof. It's okay, I'm sure you're gonna, you know, put Neil Breen on there at some point. I'm gonna have to, aren't I? Yeah, when's his fucking new film gonna be available for, for us to watch? Uh, I thought it was out. Yeah, it's out in, in certain cinemas. They haven't. Yeah, he's doing the. Um, he's getting all of his awards by uh, showcasing yeah, all his well deserved yeah, awards. Yeah, hundred percent. So my list currently stands at um, in the mouth of madness, Heather's Johnny Mnemonic, Murder Ahoy, Krull and Doom, and I'm I'm happy to leave mm. it like that for now. Uh, G has Ocean's Eleven, Raiders of the Lost Ark, Sea of Love, Mister and Mrs Smith. Shutter Island and Coraline and Sophie has Labyrinth, The Hidden Rothos, Blowout <laughs> Total Recall and Cemetery Man Total Recall, I don't mm. remember you putting that on there what the fuck? I do so I asked you um, before we went it wasn't even on recording, before we went uh, on our little Christmas break I said could you add it to the list before I forget ah, okay yep. excellent, right Okay, so the first roll is to see what number on each of our lists it will be. Let's see. <laughs> it's like on its side. It's a uh, one. That's a one to apparently. me. It's a one. Yeah, yeah it's a but one. But the animation of it is like between one and four. What the fuck? What? That's crazy. So it's going to be uh, In the Mouth of Madness or Ocean's Eleven or Labyrinth. Oh my God, please don't be G. I, that's all I want. <laughs> all I want. Can't do it. More than anything in the world. <laughs> I just want it to not be G Star Games. Okay. So a one or a two will be me. A three or a four will be G. A five or a six will be Sophie. Let's just fucking do it. Let's just do it. 
Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> Are you fucking kidding me? Come on, man! Ah! <laughs> it's G-Star Games. We're going to be watching Ocean's Eleven. Well, good news is I'm locked out next Ocean's week. Ocean's so. Eleven. <laughs> the silver lining. <laughs> Starring a whole host of Hollywood stars. George Clooney. A whole host of Julia... Hollywood stars that I can't tell the difference between. Julia Roberts. Have you have you ever seen Matt it? Matt Damon. If... Brad Pitt. Um, Andy Garcia. Yeah. It's just a heist film. <laughs> it's just... Yeah. It's a heist film. <laughs> and... it's, just, it's just heat rebranded. <laughs> Oh no! It's nothing like, oh god! It is nothing like heat. It's mm. she pulled the she pulled the heat card. We're in mm. for it's it. It's a lighthearted, funny it. film. Um, I fucking love this film. It's so good. Famous uh, remake of the the OG uh, that had uh, Frank Sinatra, Dean Martin, and Sammy Davis Jr. in. Um, Can I watch oh, that one I instead? I it's didn't longer. Know that. The original film yeah, is I'm longer. Fine with it. I just don't sure? want to watch Brad Pitt's stupid fucking face. <laughs> oh my oh, god! Yeah, what's your problem with Brad Pitt again? I've got a lot of problems with Brad Pitt. We have beef. We have beef going back oh, years. You got, you got personal beef with oh my Brad, god. Pitt. Okay. Brad Pitt. There's a whole story there somewhere. Uh, maybe we'll hear it next week on Yom. Goodbye, everyone. Uh, see you next week for Ocean's Eleven. Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye. Hello everyone and happy new year. We hope you guys had a fantastic holiday and Christmas season. Uh, we are in the year 2024 and Yomp is still going. So from all of us at Yomp, uh, we'd like to say happy new year and welcome. Welcome and thank you so much to those of you uh, who support us, especially at the Giga Yomp. You guys are our uh, executive producers, so to speak. So thank you very much to Bottle Gnomes, Enki13, Native Blood, Luck33, I'm a Robot, Lawrence Thibodeau, Sleepy DIJ, and Scott5877. You guys are MVPs, and we'll catch you on the next episode. Goodbye!